Hey yogis, Josie here. Welcome to the Yoga Local podcast. This week I'm going to chat to you about discipline because that's what we're going to be focusing on next week as part of our studio practice. And it's also going to be behind some of the teachings that you'll find in the Yoga Local app. So I just wanted to have a discussion with you about discipline and, and what you feel, what your feelings are around discipline and because um, all kinds of things can come up um, about following the rules, doing what needs to be done. Um, I, I kind of considered myself um, a little bit of a, um, a rule breaker. Um, but so I think kind of I like, um, I like yoga for the reasons that, you know, there are rules and there are rules, but um, once we've learned the rules, there's also room for, for breaking those rules and moving beyond those rules. So it's a really cool practice. Um, for me to be able to explore things within the within the framework of um, a very reassuring um, map, right? A very reassuring map that if you follow, it will get you to where you want to be going. But also not so rigid, not so tight, not so um, not so constricting, right? Because we're all here to um, to uncover our um, our, our potential and who we really are and you know that for you is different than it is for me so there has to be that flexibility right um, but ultimately there is still that fundamental need to to stick at it right and discipline in that way really appeals to me um, because I'm a, I'm a great believer in that if you show up if you make those little steps if you if you trust um, in the small things um, and don't get so wrapped up in the big grandiose kind of um, desires and achievements that at some point you um, you get to where you want to be. And discipline, especially, especially um, when there's challenge in that discipline is, is really tricky, right? We, it, we, we find it really hard to, to stick to, to something um, if it challenges us. So um, we've got to really kind of dig into, you know, what is it we want? What is it we want? And are we ready to, to go for it? Um, we've got to pick ourselves up every time we fall. We've got to gently nurture ourselves back to what it is that we actually want. And, and discipline is that tool that will get us there. Um, with discipline, you can kind of find that faith that everything will come if you just practice, if you just um, commit. Commitment is um, one of my key values, commitment and consistency. Um, those two things combined can have a, um, a, a tremendous amount of power. Consistency, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Um, or keep looking at how you're doing, right? Consistently come back to something. It doesn't necessarily mean um, coming back and just repeating it in a way that isn't creative, but keep coming back to it, revisit it. Like, does it still serve? Does it not still serve? And that is, and that takes that commitment, right? That takes that commitment to um, to yourself to um, to go there, and and also challenge yourself, like. Did that work? Um, yes, no. Let's make another choice. Um, a lot of the time we use um, discipline as that kind of word that... that it's a word that we can use to kind of create that harshness, that rigidity, that, um, like, it's kind of negative, like, We'll, we can practice harshly. We, we'll, we'll practice in a way that is not nourishing, right? The discipline, it's a bit like, you know, Sergeant Major kind of um, energy, right? That's, that's not what we're talking about. Um, a little bit of tough love, but there's always, you know, there's always bringing it back to the yoga, to, to the, the actual love. Like, what is it? What is it that you're 
wanting for yourself. It should come from this place of, you know, real deep soul level. This is what I need. This is what I need to grow. This is what I need to nurture myself. And I'm prepared to go in and, and do that work. And that might mean that, you know, I have to make changes, make choices that I'm not currently making, or I might have to follow things that I'm not sure about. Um, it's, it's, um, it's not easy to stick at stuff, especially if we're not getting that, that validation, that immediate instant gratification that, you know, we're getting results or we're, we're becoming. And, you know, that is, that is part of the practice. Can we still keep coming back and have faith and have trust? I mean, those, the, that was last week's focus, right? Having some, having some trust um, and, and using that trust to help um, move us forward um, in our practice. So discipline. In this kind of frame of because it's what we know we need. It's because we love ourselves enough to get up in the morning and practice. We love ourselves enough to know that we need to start to co-create a life for us that is actually going to make us feel fulfilled and um, that we deserve to um, have a healthy body, that we deserve to greet each day feeling positive, feeling like we can navigate our day feeling physically well, mentally well, um, but also, um, you know, with that desire for what else, what's next, you know, that, that desire to evolve and move into your next kind of chapter. Um, yeah. Where, why should the, why should the road stop at any, at any point? Like, let's keep coming back and checking out where we are, um, on that map and plot our next course. So we're going to work with discipline in, in practice in a way that reminds us that actually coming back to something again and again um, is a really helpful strategy. Um, we all have stuff that we need to work on to get us like further along our journey. And sometimes I think we kind of... Um, we kind of jump ahead, you know, jump ahead a little bit of, of where of where we need to work. So let's just keep coming back. So for example, like we have this, this structure of Hatha Yoga, seven stages. The first two stages are purification and strengthening. That's, that's our first goal as yogis, to purify, to get the, the body clean and to get stronger, to make the body um, stronger and ready for our practice. And that's all kind of tied into um, the sister science of yoga, Ayurveda, which is this umbrella science and it's a science of balanced living. Um, so we have got something coming up actually for you that um, you might be interested in if you're... Um, if you're feeling like you need to get back to some of the fundamentals, um, we're doing an Ay Ayurvedic um, workshop. So it's an intro to Ayurveda as the science of balanced living. That's going to be on the 1st of April. I think it's a Friday evening. And um, during that, um, you'll learn about um, Ayurveda as this tool to help us get in the weeds and um, identify where we are bringing in imbalance by the choices that we make in our life. So that could be our sleeping habits, it can be um, the way that we eat, it's our relationships, it's our financial situation, it's um, you know how we navigate our working life. Um, Ayurveda kind of speaks to this whole idea that um, we accumulate toxins in the body which express themselves um, physically as dis-ease, dis-ease, stress. If we're not tackling that toxic burden at that level, um, at the purification and the strengthening phase of um, Hatha Yoga, 
then we're going to be carrying those burdens with us for the duration of our journey. It's like setting off on a <laughs> on a trek, going up a mountain and, and bringing your whole kind of life baggage with you. So Hatha Yoga has these seven stages and um, stage one and two are that are that, uh, those phases where we, we kind of start addressing some of those issues and um, eliminating some of those um, those toxic um, those toxic effects um, so if you're interested in um, or if you feel like you kind of need to go a few steps back and um, and do that work then I'd really encourage you a to come to the um, the workshop and then we're also going to be doing a detox weekend um, in the studio um, that is the 22nd to the 25th of April um, where you'll get to um, actually practically put into effect some of the um, some of the principles of Ayurveda eating Ayurvedically um, which is um, something we should all be thinking about doing regardless as I say of where we feel we are on our journey it's about coming back and reviewing and also recognizing that the seasons play a big part in how we um, how we feel and how we're taking our in our environment so as the season shifts things can start to shift in our bodies energetically and it's about paying attention to that and making new choices based on what our body is feeding back to us and the the more artful that we can get at recognizing those shifts and those changes and making different choices, then the, the more possibility that we have of, um, of creating a life experience that serves us and, and keeps us feeling well and fulfilled and whole. So yeah, sometimes we need to step back to move forward. Um, where are you on your journey? Can you um, really reflect um, and and then do what it takes to to address what needs to be done. You know, it's that tough love thing coming back. But we get stuck in our ways. We get we become accustomed to doing things a certain way at a certain time. Um, you know, to some extent, it helps us, right? It helps us to navigate our life. But over a certain amount of time, those same those same structures that gave us some kind of um, uh, discipline in the past don't, don't no longer serve us anymore. Um, you know, as I said, I, I, uh, sorry, not Ayurveda, Hatha Yoga is structured in, in seven stages. So you have stage one and two, purification, um, strengthening. Ayurveda is a big part of that story and that's where we begin unburdening and eliminating our, our waste. Stage, stages three and four is your moon practice, getting the mind calm and steady. Stages five and six is the rise practice, the sun practice, where we start to get more sensitive because we've, we've got less waste, if you like, for, for want of a better way of, of explaining, because we're cleaner and we're more receptive. We start to become more receptive to our energetic body, prana, we build our prana. Um, that's the solar practice, that's the rise practice. And then um, moving into into the fire in stage um, three, four, five, six, eight, seven is is the fire, and it's um, that's the accelerating um, journey to exploring ourselves as um, as as our, as our spiritual self, um, and you know lighting our internal flame um, to illuminate that path. So. We have these different stages to guide us, but it's not always just a linear journey from one to seven. Sometimes we need to um, reassess. Like sometimes we need the fire, um, but sometimes we need the moon, right? We need the stability of the mind, or maybe things have um, have changed in our life, which make you know make our our imbalances um, or or start to create imbalances. In, in, in other areas of our life and we need to use the practice to to help us through them. Okay, so sometimes it's a solar practice, sometimes it's a moon practice, sometimes it's a fire practice. 
And I know it's, it's easy to just kind of carve out that hour once a week, this is when I practice yoga, but then if it's not serving you, kind of like you've got to ask yourself, you know, um, you know, I don't want to waste your. I don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your time. Let's really, let's really be efficient and um, start to um, create the necessary discipline that's going to help us move into our practice in a, in a way that's that's serving and not just something that we do. We you know we're not yoga is not and an, it's not entertainment. Um, I think it's got a little bit lost in that. Um, so. I guess what I'm saying is that we should have the discipline to to come back and reflect um, on how we are using practice to to continue our journey in an evolutionary way. There is little chance of us accessing that connection to our spiritual sense of self to be in the fire if we have lost our minds <laughs> so we sometimes need to go back to the moon and do the work of getting into a Parnavayu the grounding energy the stabilizing energy the balancing and equalizing energy of Samanu Vayu in our twist practices which kind of throws us into a little bit of a dilemma because we've carefully crafted out probably one hour where we get to to come to to the studio um, now, you know, this is where we have to challenge ourselves because yoga isn't entertainment. It's not a nice thing to do. It is a nice thing to do, but it's not just here as, um, as, uh, yeah, as, a, as a performance, as, um, something just to, to fill time. This is, um, well, if, if, if you want to be practicing yoga, um, in what I consider yoga and what the tradition considers yoga. It's about actually following a pathway and to growth, um, to, to, to fulfill your potential. And if we're not prepared to like upset the apple cart every now and then and claim what is rightfully ours, um, we're not really, we're not going to get any further. Um, you know, it's a bit of a hard truth really. We we need to we need to re, to love ourselves, respect ourselves, honor the tradition, honor the strategy, honor the science. If we're really going to get towards where we want to go, and so that's going to mean changing things at certain at certain corners. Like, is it this way or that way? Where do I need to go next? What's the pathway for me? You know, we're all individual, um, and we are learning through our yoga practice what, what our, our, our needs are and that's not in a uh you know what's the you know in an egotistical kind of it's all about me kind of way it's it's more about like honoring honoring your soul's calling like your if you, honoring your evolution honoring your growth you know got plants outside some of them um will bloom at certain times some of them need certain conditions for growth right we don't we don't call a plant selfish if it needs to be planted in winter um we don't call it selfish and plant it in summer does if that's kind of where i'm going with this it's like what what do you need to thrive? What do you need to survive? What do you not, not just survive, th yeah, thrive. What do you need to thrive? Don't, don't we deserve to um, like figure that information out and then start to craft and create a life that supports that? And uh, that's my question to you. Um, so are you ready to figure it out? Can you create that disciplined attitude um, to, sh to show up for yourself in the right places at the right times and following the right course, following the right strategies that are most appropriate. So I think that kind of wraps up everything um, that I wanted to talk about. I hope, it's, um, I hope it just gets you thinking, right? We get so locked into our ways 
and sometimes it takes um, a step back, reassessing and finding a new, a new set of roles and then attaching a little bit of discipline to getting the job done. So with that, I will let you go. I hope to see you in class next week. There'll be a lot of um, work on repetition, coming back to things, reflecting. So come, come on over and, um, and we'll practice together and yeah, we'll get on that path towards thriving. Okay, bye for now.